Good day, our dear panelists. We are here today to present to you our thesis study. But before that, let me just introduce myself and my groupmates. My name is Ryan Zikilang, and my groupmates are Ms. Rina Mendoza, Mr. Adrian Jing Villarta, and Ms. Frenalin Pagaduan, and we are the fourth year Section 4A students who are currently taking the Bachelor of Elementary Education, and we are here to present to you our thesis study entitled The Barriers to Students' Learning in Virtual Classes. First, let me just introduce to you the background of the study. The world is currently in a state of emergency due to COVID-19 pandemic. According to Anaki and Share Guide 2021, the virus first emerged in Wuhan, China, resulting in severe instances and high mortality rate worldwide. Physical distancing, enforced face mask use, and adequate cleanliness are all being implemented to help stop the spread of the virus. Institutions, colleges, and the Department of Education all over the Philippines have implemented a temporary academic freeze due to policies and safety protocols to ensure everyone's safety. However, despite the ongoing crisis brought on by the pandemic, the Commission on Higher Education and other institutions are adapting new methods and more flexible learning to ensure the quality of education. According to Prospero de Vera, Chairman of the Commission on Higher Education, we learn as one and we are ready. There are no ifs or buts. Learning should continue despite the pandemic. Hence, new technologies such as virtual reality are emerging that can be used in online learning to ensure that learning continues. According to Choi and Yom 1996, virtual class is a flexible digital platform for online learning that allows teachers to connect with students in real time, improve educational quality, and increase students' access to online learning. Unfortunately, according to Vienna and Alencar 2006, and Millenberg and Bird 2005, some students discover challenges with their online class participation, such as lack of enthusiasm in studying in the synchronous mode of learning in the implementation of virtual classroom. In the discussion of conceptual framework of this study, may I call on Ms. Rina Mendoza to discuss about the conceptual framework. Thank you, Sir Ryan Kilang, for that wonderful explanation. We will now proceed to conceptual framework. According to Muhlenberg and Burge 2005, the factors to online learning can be categorized into six factors. The following factors are prerequisite skills, technical, time interruptions, support service, social, and motivation. Prerequisite skills are areas that most students believe that they should have mastered to some degree before entering an online classroom. Furthermore, technical skills refers to students' familiarity with the online system and the software or hardware used in online learning. Students' motivation has something to do with the psychological processes that cause students to persist in achieving their learning objectives. There is also social interaction among students which refers to the learning environment created for online learning which should be friendly and social as well as one that promotes learning. Unfortunately, students' time or interruptions have to do with perceived barriers to students' learning and interruptions. Students' reluctance to support the service is also due to issues that the instructor or organization cannot control. Thus, online learning barriers impact students' performance. In that case, the obstacles students face in online learning would lead to them by abandoning the course or dropping out by Will Jing and Johnson, 2009. I will give the floor to Ms. Frenalin Pagaduan to discuss the statement of the problem. Thank you, Ms. Rina Mendoza. 
The world is currently in a state of emergency due to COVID-19 pandemic. Institutions, colleges, and the Department of Education all over the Philippines have implemented a temporary academic peace due to policies and safety protocols to ensure everyone's safety. However, despite the ongoing crisis brought on by the pandemic, the Commission on Higher Education and other institutions adopting new methods and more flexible to ensure the quality of education. As a result, new technologies such as virtual reality are emerging that can be used in online learning to ensure that learning continues. Unfortunately, despite the effectiveness of virtual class implementation, some are concerned about several issues and challenges related to overcoming barriers to online learning. Thus, this study would determine the barriers encountered by the students in virtual classes during the pandemic, as well as the level of students' learning performance in virtual classes. The major problem particularly answers the following specific questions. Number one, what is the profile of the respondents in terms of sex, age, course, and year level? Two, what are the barriers encountered by the students on learning virtual classes during the pandemic in terms of administrative or instructor issues, social interaction issues, academic skill issues, technical skill issues, learner motivation issues, time and support for studies, cost and access to the internet issues, and technical problem issues. Number three, what is the level of the academic performance of the students on learning in virtual classes during the pandemic? Number four, what is the significant relationship between students' academic performance and barriers on learning in virtual classes during the pandemic? Number five, what is the significant difference on the barriers encountered by the student on learning in virtual classes when grouped according to profile variables? Next is the significance of the study to be discussed by Mr. Adrian Villarta. Thank you, Ms. Frenaline. And now I will discuss the uh, uh, significance of the study. Uh, the purpose of this study is to determine the barriers in virtual classes and assess the uh, relative impact on the students' learning performance. So, given the growing of virtual classes and their use in the new normal of uh, education, it is critical to understand the, the barriers to virtual classes. The purpose of this study is to determine the barrier in the virtual classes and assess the relative uh, impact on the students' learning performance. Understanding the different types of uh, barrier will uh, enable the students' readiness and preparedness to focus upon the most critical uh, potential barriers. Uh, a possible purpose is to lessen the uh, number of students uh, who drop out uh, of in virtual classes uh, due to learning uh, difficulties. Thank you, Mr. Adrian. The research design of this study. This study utilizes a cross-sectional, correlational, comparative, non-experimental, quantitative research design. The researchers conducting a non-experimental, quantitative research design simply measures variables as they naturally occur. In a cross-sectional, variables are identified at one point in a time. For the discussion of the participants of the study, may I call on Rina Mendoza to discuss. Thank you, Sir Ryan Kilang. In this study, there are 100 respondents, second year to fourth year students enrolled in the Bachelor of Elementary Education and the Bachelor of Secondary Education in Isabella State University, Kawayan Campus. I will now give the floor to Ms. Prendalin Pagaduan to discuss the instruments. Thank you, Ms. Rina Mendoza. The instrument used was a researcher-made questionnaire checklist to collect the necessary data for the students. A survey questionnaire was utilized to collect data and it was adapted from Marshall et al. 2015. However, the instrument used to assess 
students learning are their general weighted average or their GWA. Next is data collection to be discussed by Mr. Adrian Villarta. Thank you, Ms. Frenalin. So now this is a data collection. The researcher opted to use an appropriate design for the study to determine the differences between and among the barrier to a virtual class. This study should have a use a data collection instrument and a research questionnaire to obtain the necessary data for this study. Researcher should conduct a survey utilizing a questionnaire. Furthermore, a survey is described as a gathering information about the characteristics, actions, or views of a big group of people according to Point and Kramer 1993. In addition, surveys are used to assess needs, estimate demand, and investigate the effect according to Salan and Dillman 1994. To adequately characterize of a survey. In pre-collection, the uh, researcher is uh, preparing for a survey form using a Google form a questionnaire for data collected online to determine the barriers encountered by the students in virtual classes during pandemic. However, uh, to measure the level of the students uh, learning performance in uh, receiving the barriers to virtual classes, the researcher will uh, request the uh, respondents uh, permission first to obtain data. So, uh, during uh, data collection, this, uh, the respondents will uh, uh, willingness of the to part participate in the survey. Uh, respondents were asked to rate the barrier through uh, a five-point like or scale using Google Form questionnaire. Nevertheless, the study's findings will be relayed to the research advisor and the dean of the College of Education. Additional in the data analysis is defined as the process of uh, bringing order, structure, and meaning to a large amount of data. To analyze and describe the variables of this study, uh, the researcher used the mean and standard deviation as a statistical tools to determine the level of uh, academic performance of students on learning in virtual classes during the pandemic. So the following scale was used to describe the barriers encountered by the students of learning virtual classes during the pandemic. So 4.50 to 5 always 3.50 to 4.49 is of 10 and 2.50 to 3.49 sometimes 1.50 and 2.49 really 1.0 and 1.49 is a never thank you mr adrian now for the discussion of the results and recommendation in table one we will answer the first question in the statement of the problem. What is the profile of the respondents in terms of sex, age, course, and year level? And here is the result. Most of the respondents were female, or 64%, 20 to 25 years old, which is 78%, and the Bachelor of Secondary Students, or 61%, and third-year students are 59%. Now, in Table 2, Administrative Instructor Issues Encountered by the Respondents on Learning in Virtual Classes During the Pandemic. This table answers the question in the statement of the problem. What are the barriers encountered by the students on learning in virtual classes during the pandemic in terms of administrative or instructor issues, social interaction issues, academic skill issues, learner motivation issues, time and support for studies, cost and access to the internet issues, and technical problem issues. And here is the result. It can be observed from the table that in terms of administrative or instructor issues, 
Respondents sometimes do not have support services such as tutors, and sometimes they experience difficulties in contacting their teachers. Moreover, they rarely do not have academic advisor in the online learning class, and they rarely encounter teachers who do not know how to teach online. In general, respondents sometimes encounter administrative or instructional issues in virtual classes during the pandemic. And our recommendation in terms of administrative or instructor concerns, it was suggested that students in this study at higher education institutions be flexible in providing the necessary services to maintain their effort in their online learning class. Similarly, students who do not have access to support services are sometimes encouraged to attend a seminar on digital tools for online learning. And in table three, which is the social interaction issues, the result is it can be observed from the table that in terms of social interaction issues, respondents often prefer to learn in a classroom setting. Moreover, they sometimes afraid of feeling isolated in online learning and they sometimes prefer to learn by following their peers or peer guidance. Furthermore, they rarely not familiar with the use of internet to interact with others. Nonetheless, respondents sometimes encountered social interaction issues on learning in virtual classes during the pandemic. Our recommendation in these issues in terms of social interaction, it suggested that instructor create an environment of social intimacy where every student in the classroom feels comfortable sharing ideas. Moreover, students instructors should utilize more collaborative discussions and activities such as group discussions, group activities, and other interactive activities. As online learning isolate students, interaction may help them feel connected with others and become a part of the socialized culture in the classroom. And for the discussion of the academic skill issues, may I call on Ms. Prenali Pagaduan to discuss the result of these issues. Thank you, Mr. Ryan Kilang. Now, we go to Table 4, which is the academic skill issues. In terms of academic skill issues, the respondents sometimes experience shyness or lack of confidence in online learning. Furthermore, they rarely do not have sufficient typing skills, and rarely they experience difficulties in their reading skills. In general, the respondents sometimes encountered academic skill issues on learning in virtual classes during the pandemic. Apart from the academic skill issues of the students in this study, it suggests that teachers must make their students feel comfortable in communicating. Additionally, Teachers should utilize the Socratic method during and after the discussion to build confidence of the students to speak and answer the question that has given to them. Moreover, teachers should formulate an activity that builds confidence to their students to talk to their peer in think, pair, share. Now, we move on to Table 5 which is the technical skill issues. In terms of technical skill issues, the respondents sometimes have insufficient skills for using the delivery system. And sometimes, they have insufficient online learning software skills. Moreover, they were rarely unfamiliar with online learning technical tools, such as Google Meet, Google Classroom, or Google Drive and rarely experience fear of using computer or laptops. In general, the respondents rarely experience technical skill issues on learning in virtual classes during the pandemic. In terms of the technical skill issues, students in this study are recommended to conduct training or orientation and regular practice on online classes and ensure needed infrastructure and resources are in place and available respectively. Now, we go to Table 6 to be discussed by Mr. Adrian Villarta. In Table number 6, 
in terms of learners' motivation issues, students often feel more engaged in the face-to-face -face classes than online classes. So, so the mean is of 4.15 in the standard deviation is 1.3. Okay, in the in terms of time and study support, uh, it is uh, recommend that the students make time during online classes to look for pleasant place to sit. Aside from that, students uh, in this study are uh, advised to find a convenient room within their home that uh, is free of destruction of any environment. Table number seven, uh, in terms of time and support for studies issues, uh, sometimes uh, experience disturbance and interruption during the study in their home on online classes. Uh, the mean is 3.47 and the standard deviation is 1.0. So, to address each student issues with the uh, internet accessibility and internet uh, usage costs, government uh, officials Schools and administrators uh, should help schools to provide the free internet access to, to all students and to enable them to cope up the lessons. Uh, learners can uh, reduce their expenses uh, associated with the uh, online learning uh, and save money or allowance. Uh, finally, to ensure that uh, no students left behind in the new normal learning, especially in this pandemic. In terms of cost and access to the internet issues, the respondents sometimes encountered lag conversation or discussion due to loss of connection during online classes with mean 3.00 and standard deviation of 0.89. The recommendation for Table 8 to address each student's issue with internet accessibility and internet usage costs, government officials, schools, and administrators should help schools or the nearest barangay to provide free internet access to all students to enable them to integrate into the new normal class and cope up with the lessons. By implementing this, learners can reduce their expenses associated with online learning and save money for necessities and allowances. Finally, to ensure that no students are left behind in the new normal of learning. To enhance their learning concerning the new virtual classes. In Table 9, in terms of technical problem issues, respondents sometimes encountered audio throwbacks or unwanted echoes during online learning classes with mean 2.91 and standard deviation of 0.86. In Table 9 recommendation, to avoid distractions and misunderstandings during online classes, teachers and students should always prepare and maintain audible, strong connection, and clean environment for online learning. As a result, if these perceptions are implemented, they may benefit from more effective and stable connectivity within online learning classes. I will now give the floor to Mr. Ryan Kilang to discuss the Table 10. Thank you, Ms. Rina Mendoza. In Table 10, it answered the third questions in the statement of the problem. What is the level of the academic performance of the students on learning in virtual classes during the pandemic? And here is the result. It can be noted that at least 62 or 62% 62 of the students had a fairly satisfactory academic performance during the pandemic. Furthermore, as a whole, they had a fairly satisfactory academic performance. In Table uh, 11, answer the number uh, 4 question in the statement of the problem, so which is 
what is the significant relationship uh, between students' academic performance in a barrier on a learning in virtual classes during pandemic. So, there is no significant relationship between respondent academic performance in a barrier learning in virtual uh, classes during pandemic. In connection to this, uh, the learning outcomes of online students uh, have been observed compared to those of uh, face-to-face students uh, according to Pull of and uh, Pra 2001 and Red Pa 2012. Likewise, uh, no charge in cognitive characteristics uh, such as the quantity of learning academic performance uh, between online and traditional campus-based uh, classroom uh, spoon, Spooner 1999 and according to Robinson and Hallinger uh, 2008. Uh, eight studies on the efficacy of uh, online learning fall into uh, three major categories, uh, which is number one is a uh, student uh, uh, results, tests, and grades, and number two is students' attitude towards learning, and the last one is student uh, success in online learning. In Table 12, it can be observed that there was no significant differences in the barriers encountered by mail with a mean of 2.94 and standard deviation of 0.63 and female students of mean 2.83 and standard deviation of 0.72 t 98 and p of 0.415 on learning in virtual classes during the pandemic in terms of age it can be noted that there was no significant difference on the barriers encountered by students who are 18 to 19 years old with a mean of 3.14, standard deviation 0.85, with a mean of 2.83, and from the 20 to 25 years of their age, with a mean of 2.83, and standard deviation of 0.59, and T, 1.958, P, 0.651. On on learning in virtual classes during the pandemic. Thank you, Ms. Rina Mendoza. Now, we go to Table 13. The comparison of respondents' barriers on learning in virtual classes during the pandemic when grouped according to year level. Is there significant difference on the barriers encountered by the students on learning in the virtual class when grouped according to profile variables? The result revealed that there was no difference in the barriers encountered by the first year, second year, and third year students on learning in virtual classes during the pandemic. It means that regardless of year level, the barriers experienced by the students are statistically the same. Those are the information we gathered for our research. That's all. Thank you for listening.